Oh no, not a video. <laughs> Made it to Chicago to visit Hermias. Yay, he's playing with Grant Park Symphony Orchestra this summer. I've been trying to think about how I'm going to use this coming week to prepare for the recital. Now obviously that Santi is not around to rehearse and I'm not gonna see him until the 15th, I believe, which is about a week before the recital. So I think one of my goals this week is to get things feeling much more solid, working on those technical passages that I find difficult in the pieces so that then the following week when I'm back in New York, I can really focus on doing a few run-throughs just by myself of the program. I've realized that I haven't given a full-length recital since I think the fall after I graduated from my master's at Juilliard. That was the fall of 2016, so that's been a while now. And giving a recital feels much more different than playing in a chamber concert or playing in an orchestra concert. And I remember actually at my Juilliard graduation recital in the spring of 2016, having a moment when I was on stage that I slightly was freaking out a bit inside because it occurred to me that, oh my gosh, I've never like run through my program from start to finish with the intermission in between, basically feeling like, oh yeah, I've played all of these pieces by themselves, but I've never run through the whole thing and playing a big program like that from start to finish is a completely different feeling so now that i'm older and wiser hopefully i'm going to try to learn from some of the mistakes i've made in the past and my goal is to next week run through the program a few times individually that way when i see santi again we can do a lot of rehearsing and also do some run throughs together Another thing that I've been thinking about in terms of recital preparation is that I need to start sleeping better. I've not been getting the best quality of sleep these past few weeks, months. I've been staying up late to practice, to edit videos, and then waking up early to do more of that. And I've been drinking a fair amount of caffeine, and that's something that I want to kind of phase out. So I think that this morning was my last cappuccino for a while, and it wasn't even a good cappuccino. I went to some random Starbucks, and the barista was like, is there milk in a cappuccino? And I was just like... And that was my last cappuccino for a while, like... And also on the same line with the caffeine, I think I'm going to phase out the alcohol for a while. I don't drink heavily. Hitter Muse just texted me and he says, I don't hear the flute. He's in the other room practicing. He's trying to make sure that I'm on track. Talking to the good people of YouTube. Anyway, what was I saying? The alcohol. So I'm not typically a big drinker, but if I'm with my family or my friends, I might have a cocktail if we're going out to dinner. But I do think that I'm gonna try to phase that out also, just because that is something that can also affect your sleep quality. And honestly, I should just be drinking more water in general. So yeah, I thought I would fill you guys in on a few of my goals with the recital prep. And now I'm gonna get back to some practicing. So I am back in New York City. I got back yesterday from Chicago at about 1 p.m. and I was planning to be super productive to get a lot of practicing done, film some videos, do some editing. And when I got back to my apartment, I opened the door, I noticed this horrible smell and I was like, oh my God, I forgot to take the trash out and it's been sitting there for the past two weeks. But no, that was not the case. My refrigerator and my freezer were both blowing hot air and I've been gone for the past two weeks, so I'm not sure when that started to happen, but long story short, basically everything in my freezer had melted and was leaking and was covering like my kitchen floor, and everything inside the refrigerator was growing mold, like I'm not kidding you, like a layer of fuzzy mold an inch thick on everything. So yeah, that was unpleasant to say the least. If you can imagine the worst hot summer day New York City smell times like 3,000, add like dead body, dead animal in there, um, you can imagine how it smelled. 
so I spent the majority of the day cleaning that up. Things were like leaking behind the oven, behind the refrigerator. I had to like have everything moved out and clean. So I did not touch my flute yesterday. And my fridge and my freezer are still broken, so I'm not gonna have a new one until after Mexico, which is, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm feeling a bit low energy today just after dealing with everything yesterday. And I'm not feeling very pleased with myself that I did not practice. And today I'm getting a late start on my practicing. I had to run some errands this morning, but I'm trying to be gentle with myself. It's just really hard because I have a to-do list of about a million things that I need to get done and sorted out before I leave for Mexico in less than a week. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna try to get done as much as possible today. Then tomorrow I have a hair appointment to go to in the late morning, afternoon, and then I have to go teach at some place that is not close to my apartment. So I'm gonna try to figure out also how to prioritize things tomorrow as far as practicing is concerned. So I'm gonna try to get some work done right now and I will talk to you guys later. Hey guys. So yesterday, I went to get my hair done. I'm not a natural blonde. Oh my god, I bet you didn't know that. It looked so real, right? Anyway, I went to go get my hair touched up, and I've never gone in New York ever. I've lived here almost five years, and I've never had anyone touch my hair here. I normally just go back to Pennsylvania, and I've only gone to two places in my life, and recently I only started going to the second place like in the last year. So I decided I'd try to be cheap and pay $80 for my balayage and I went on this website called Salon Apprentice and this is not to bash that website because I know some people that have had great experiences on there but it's kind of a gamble. So I made an appointment at the salon and the stylist sent me photos of their work and it looked really great and I was like wow this is going to be awesome. So I got there and he started cutting my hair and I actually really like the haircut like I think he did a good job. He was so passionate when he was cutting it, he like kept looking in the mirror like... And I was like, wow, this is a man that really loves his job. So I should have just left then after he cut my hair and just dealt with the fact that I had like six inches of roots. But no, so I sat in that chair for about three hours while he painted highlights onto my head. And then after they washed my hair and they put a toner on and everything, they took the towel off of my head in front of the mirror. And I was like, oh my God. I'm a brunette and I'm not brunette shaming if you want to be a brunette or you are a brunette all the power to you like this is my natural hair color but when you ask for one thing and you're reassured that that is what the outcome is going to be and then this happens the stylist was like what do you think and I was like you literally unblonded me you made the opposite result like this is basically like my natural hair color. I sat there for hours and now I'm gonna have to go make an appointment somewhere else to get this fixed. And they apologized, but he was also like, yeah, we're not really sure how this happened. How can you post photos of your work and claim that this is like what you can do and this is your skill level? And then obviously it's not. So yeah, I had a bit of a breakdown on the streets of Manhattan, just wandering aimlessly around Midtown after I left and I called my mom and I was like, I'm a brunette and she's like, sweetie, your natural hair color is brown. I was born a blonde, okay? And then I sent Hitermius a photo and he's like, oh my god, I really like it. Like, don't get the blonde back. But all in all, maybe I am overreacting and I'm definitely being dramatic because <laughs> I'm dramatic. Did you know? But it's just like, I'm supposed to leave for Mexico in a few days and there were so many things that I was supposed to get done this week. And then first the refrigerator situation, it still smells so bad in here. I can't even really take a deep breath in. I was practicing yesterday and every time I breathed in, I was just like, oh. I'm aware that things could be way worse, but you know, it still sucks. Anyway. I'm gonna go get this fixed later. First, I'm gonna stop at the Flute Center. I have some stuff to pick up there, something really exciting that you'll see in another video, and also some flutes that I'm gonna be using for my sponsored video of the month for them. And then earlier this morning, I went to drop my flute off at my repair tech, and he was like, it's leaking everywhere, and there's a lot of motion happening in the left hand that shouldn't be there. It's music to my ears whenever they're like, yeah, this is a really, bad situation here. How have you been playing? Thank you. It's not because like I got worse or something or I haven't been practicing my long tones enough. No, the instrument 
is broken. So yeah, it's gonna be a good day because I'm gonna make it a good day. Even if my apartment smells like a dead body, even if I'm a brunette, even if I have to practice on my pink eBay flute because my flute is in the shop, you know? And I have a confession to make. I know I said earlier in this vlog that uh, I was gonna quit the caffeine. Okay, it lasted like a week or something, right? Like, so time to go practice before my hair appointment and yeah. I'm sorry for complaining a lot. Do I need to say that? I don't know. I just feel like I'm being kind of negative, but it's my vlog. So take one last look at brunette Katie Flute, hopefully. Hey guys, so I am not a brunette anymore. I'm kind of like a strange ginger blonde combination, but you know what? Uh, it's lighter than it was yesterday, so we'll take it. Basically, the stylist told me that she would not be able to bring me back to how blonde I was before just yet because it could really damage my hair. Uh, so I'm gonna have to wait until I get back from Mexico to totally, completely fix everything. But you know what? It is what it is. So today is July 12th. It's actually my birthday and I have not really done anything super birthday-y and fun today. Yesterday, I hung out with my friend Kristen. Um, she actually used to be a flute player and she surprised me at the hair salon with a bottle of Prosecco Which was super sweet of her and we had a really fun evening together and then today I ran some errands I picked up my flute I am so excited it plays so much better now and as you can see my apartment is currently a Disaster yet again. What's new, right? I just finished filming two YouTube videos for you guys hence all the lighting and flutes on the ground and everything I just finished filming my Would You Rather Musician Edition. Musician, musician, musician edition. Musician edition, musician edition. Say that five times fast. And also my alto flute unboxing video, which was super fun and exciting. It was basically like a birthday present to be able to open that today. That was fun. So yeah, I'm gonna clean all this up or at least attempt to and then I'm going to get some practicing done and do some laundry maybe pack a little bit yeah really exciting birthday hey guys good morning that obnoxious sound is the sound of my washing machine doing its thing um, I woke up a few hours ago I've just been doing laundry trying to do more cleaning up around here before I leave and now I'm gonna go run some errands I have to stop at the post office to mail the iPad, iPod, iPad, iPad to the giveaway winner over on my Instagram. I need to pick up my dress that's being hemmed, which I dropped off yesterday, dress for the recital, and I have to go get my nails done. I mean, I know I don't have to, but you know, this is the current situation, so I'm gonna get them cleaned up. and. I don't think I've shown a lot of my practicing preparation in this vlog yet, so I'm gonna try to film some of that today. Also check out the pimple patch. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta cover that bad boy up, let it heal. So I'll check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so I was just filming a YouTube video. I finished recording my reading your assumptions about me video. And then I was in the middle of recording my Q&A part two video when all of a sudden the power in my apartment went out and I was like, oh my God, it's because I have this ridiculous uh, lighting set up here. I was like, for sure, it's because I have these two massive box lights, this ring light, but apparently there's a huge power outage in Manhattan right now. It said there's like 27,000 people without power. It's been maybe about 30, 45 minutes now, still no power, so hopefully it comes back on soon and I can finish recording that video for you guys, but it looks like now the only thing I can do is just practice because I have no internet, my computer is dead, I cannot edit, I have no lighting, so I guess it's a sign from the universe that like I need to practice. I can't do laundry, I can't do anything else, I have to practice. So I'm gonna do that. 
it's just really frustrating because I feel like I finally was able to like sit down and record a lot of videos for you guys and now this happened like first the refrigerator situation then the hair situation and now this and like ah uh, but I guess I just got to do what I can with what I got and I gotta practice now also not to be vain and like constantly looking at myself, but I can't stop looking at myself in the little, um, whatchamacallit over here because <laughs> so weird looking and in all different lighting, it looks different. So, but it is what it is. There's no power. I don't have a refrigerator. I am an accidental brunette ginger weird hybrid going on here. Um, what you gonna do? All you can do is just go with it. So I thought I'd show you guys, I've been experimenting with using this thumb port and you might have seen it in my Flight of the Bumblebee video. There's one clip where I have it on um, just because I've been putting it on and off and seeing what I think about it. I'm still not sure yet. Maybe when I have more of an opinion on it, I can make a review video for you guys about it. Or I know some of you wanted to see like other flute gadgets. I don't really have any except for this now. But I was thinking I could talk about this and then maybe the Le Freaks, which are those like little metal doodads that you put on Soundbridge or whatever. So let me know what you guys think. No more leaking keys, which is amazing. It sounds way better than the other day. So right now I'm gonna do a little practice on the Carmen Fantasy. I wanted to share with you guys, there is this spot in here that is so tricky for me and I think other flute players struggle with it too. I know my friend was like, this page is just awful and it doesn't look that hard, it's just scales and then there's this part with these big leaps. But no matter what I was doing, I was going through all my normal usual ways of trying to work out a technical passage, like with the rhythms, like. <laughs> But I was getting really frustrated because I still kept missing notes. I didn't know what else to do. So I brought it to Hitermias and I was like, Hitermias, I need your help. I need your magic Argentine Suzuki trained violin skills to help me with this passage. Like, give me an idea how I can fix this. And he was like, well, did you try singing it? And I was like, no, I did not try singing it. For him, soul fetching things is a much more natural thing than it is for me just because I never did any soul fetch or sight singing until I got to my undergrad at NEC. But for him and his musical training, it comes a lot more naturally to him. So he was like, try singing the intervals. And I did. It was really hard at first to sing these big leaps like... <laughs> Obviously, I can't sing it in that exact range, but just singing the intervals in any octave can really help. And I realized that the whole time I thought that it was just my fingers didn't know where to go, but really it was just that my ear was not anticipating the pattern. And then in turn, my fingers didn't know where to go. So next time you have a tricky passage, try singing it slowly and see if that helps you. You don't have to worry about the soul fetch syllables if you don't know them, but just singing it on la 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 or whatever will really help. So it's about nine o'clock, the power is still out, my phone is dead, and I feel like I'm in some type of post-apocalyptic movie like The Day After Tomorrow. Do you guys remember that movie? So this could be it. My last words could be to this vlog. So I don't know, you guys should feel honored. When I first moved to New York, my mom made me this emergency backpack to keep in my closet and it has like water bottles, protein bars, flashlights, and I don't know if there was a zombie apocalypse. I'm not sure how it would help me, but you know, moms always want you to be prepared. But over the years, Hitermias and I maybe ate all the protein bars because we were hungry and maybe so. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hopefully the power is back on in a few hours, but it is not looking good. Apparently now there are 42,000 people without power. 
Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, <laughs> this looks so scary. I don't even know where to point this. Still no power. Um, apparently now there's like 52, 51,000 people with no power. Craziness. Um, it looks so weird looking out the window. I mean, you obviously won't be able to see anything, but it is just strange to see um, absolutely no lights on there in all the buildings that are normally all lit up at this time of night. So some lights just came back on out there. People are cheering in the streets and hopefully my apartment is next. We've got power, yay. So now I'm gonna finish recording that video and then go to bed and I'll see you guys in the morning for more practicing. Hey guys, so today, or I guess it's yesterday now, because it's 12.52 a.m. on Monday now, didn't vlog anything yesterday. I think I recorded like six or seven YouTube videos. Yeah, I did some slow practice earlier and then I just recorded stuff nonstop. Just trying to get things in before leaving and after Mexico I'm going to Connecticut for a week to teach and play at my friend's summer festival and then after that I'm going to Argentina for three weeks which I'm really excited about but I'm just kind of like trying to get everything done because I won't really be back in New York until like the second week of September. So yeah I cleaned up all my stuff from recording I'm basically packed and ready to go. My flight is at 5.40 a.m. so yeah. I'm gonna take a quick nap and then I'm gonna head to the airport. I'm sorry if this vlog has been pretty uneventful planning wise. I think it was eventful but not in a musical way. Like, I don't know, I'm stressing out a little bit because I'm not really exactly where I would want to be ideally in terms of preparation just because of all the stuff that happened this week like traveling back from Chicago the refrigerator was off the hair thing the power outage yesterday and I know that's life and I can't do anything about it but part of me still wants to be able to control it and like micromanage everything and so it is what it is and Santi and I are going to get a lot of good practicing and rehearsing done this coming week before the recital. So thank you guys for watching this vlog and the next time I see you or update you I will be in Mexico. So I'll see you guys later.